This is a gold glass. And by the term gold glass, I mean an object decorated with gold foil, which has been cut to the appropriate sizes and shapes, sandwiched between two protective layers of glass, which are fused. Gold glasses have been made in several different periods and places, but the object we are looking at was made in the Roman world, probably at Rome itself, in the 4th century. And it almost certainly was found in one of the catacombs, those artificial galleries, hollowed out of the rock that were used as burial places for the early Christian community in Rome and for the Jewish community as well. Although it's a neatly trimmed roundel, this isn't how the object was actually made. It was designed to be a glass vessel, a dish or a bowl. At some point, the owner decided to use the decorated medallion in the center of the vessel to mark one of the burials. Very carefully, the gold roundel from the center of the object was clipped away from the rest of the vessel. And like several hundred other medallions of this size and shape, it was placed in a catacomb to mark the burial of one of the early Christians. We know that he or she was Christian because of the subject matter. In fact, the two main figures are identified by name. On the left, you can see Petrus, St. Peter, and on the right, there is St. Paul. First, the blank is made for the base disc. Transparent glass is gathered on the end of a blowpipe, inflated, and a constriction is formed between the blowpipe and the bubble. After reheating the end of the bubble, its bottom is flattened and the sides are made cylindrical. After cooling in an oven, a diamond tool is used to make a small scratch in the side. The blank is placed on a turntable and a torch is used to heat the circumference of the blank right where the scratch was made. Eventually, a crack forms. A mixture of water and gum arabic is used as an adhesive. This mixture is painted on the blank and when it becomes slightly tacky, gold leaf is applied. The paper backing is peeled away, leaving the gold attached. The base disc is then placed back on the turntable, and a knife is used to scrape away excess gold and to create decorative circular patterns. A scribe is used to further scratch decoration into the gold. The base disc is then placed into an oven and heated to a temperature of about 950 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, the bowl is blown. Again, glass is gathered onto the end of a blowpipe, inflated, and a constriction is formed. The soft glass is held upward so that the sphere becomes a spheroid. The end is then reheated and carefully lowered onto the decorated base disc. The two stick together. The bubble and the base disc are reheated to make certain that they're fully fused together. At the completion of the process, the vessel is placed into the annealing oven for gradual cooling. The cracking off process is again used to create the vessel rim. Cracking off leaves an exceedingly sharp edge, so a stone is used to smooth the edge and make it safe for use.
Eventually, the upper bowl portion was removed by a process called grozing. Here, a simple pair of pliers are used to gradually chip away the glass.